Hello, it's Catherine Holland here of catherineholland.co.uk, inspiring author and breath coach. Sorry if you were just watching there, Periscope just dumped me, so I'm coming back again. Let's hope we don't get cut off this time. Today I'm talking about my book, Indestructible Soul, How I Decided Not to Die, by Catherine Holland. And that's me on the front there with my bike, my Ducati 916. At that time, that was about uh, eight years after the accident that the book is about. And that's my current book, in case you're about the bike, in case you're interested in seeing. That's a Honda Firestorm that I have at the moment. And this is relevant because when I had the accident, I'd been learning to ride a motorbike for about three weeks. And then I got hit by a car, um, being driven by a drunk driver. I don't perhaps I shouldn't tell you his name, but anyway, he drove into me at point blank range. He was in a side turning and I was in a long queue of cars and he pulled out just as I was going past him and drove his big heavy car right into my leg. My leg was crushed against the bike. With the impact, the bike flew up in the air and I flew up in the air. Um, my foot was nearly detached from my leg and blood was just pouring out into the road. I lost about four pints and I'm about nine and a half stones, so that's probably half or a bit more than half, actually, probably. And um, I got a very broken leg as well as losing the skin and the muscle off the leg. It's called a degloving injury where the... Um, the impact pulls, rips the skin and the muscle off the bone, as well as smashing the bone up. So it was um, it was a big injury, and I I was in such pain that I couldn't tell where the pain was coming from. So I didn't know which bit of me was injured. It was very peculiar. Um, and because I'd only just started riding a bike, I wasn't wearing the best gear. I mean, it was pretty good. It was um, it was a proper biker jacket, a real proper helmet and gloves. Um, I had Doc Martens on rather than protective motorcycle boots, but I was hit above that anyway. I was hit just below the knee. And I also had leather motorcycle trousers on as well. So I think my gear saved my leg. Anyway, the reason for telling you all this is that I had a big accident, many operations, and I survived. Not only the initial time when I lost so much blood that my kidneys and liver will have shut down, to preserve oxygen to my brain. Um, but the reason why I believe that I survived is because of my lifestyle. The main feature is the breath work that I practice, which I'd been doing for 15 years at the time of the accident. And it meant that my body was very clean. I don't know if you know this expression, clean, as in clean food, clean living. It means that the level of toxins generally circulating in your blood are relatively low and so when you lose a lot of blood you don't die of toxicity because if the kidneys are not working to preserve blood supply to your brain then your blood's not being cleaned and you've probably heard of the fact that how dangerous it is if your kidneys aren't working and that's why people have to go on to dialysis if their kidneys stop functioning so that they don't die of poisoning of their own bodies break down products of normal day-to-day -day living but if you live um, a clean lifestyle where you um, I, well I, I drank only water I still drink only water at that time half my food was raw and it was all whole food so these are some other things that really contributed to my survival and so this book is not only about the accident and the extraordinary circumstances of things like the um, skin grafts that I had took 100%, which never happens. There wasn't a box on the form that the nurses were filling in because nobody's skin graft ever takes 100%. And I put that down to my skin, my body and my blood and the environment that my cells of my body are in. The fluid that your cells are sitting in, um, the health of that meant that each cell that I remade 
was so quick and so healthy that none of them died in that process, um, which is obviously extraordinary, otherwise they would have a box on the form for it. And I had a skin graft off my other leg as well. Um, they took the skin from one leg to put it on my left leg. And so I then had two huge areas where there was um, raw, um, exposed tissue with no skin covering it. Um, and so some, let me just run through some of the areas that I cover in the book itself. And I've got myself a little list of them. Um, breathing fully, I've already covered the breath work, but it's, um, it's quite um, an experience to go through learning to breathe well, so that you breathe through any experience. Drinking water, um, that is because, contrary to popular belief, if you dissolve things in the water that you're drinking, it's no longer capable of cleaning. And I liken it to washing your clothes in beer or tea. You wouldn't expect them to get clean, would you? And your body can't get clean if you don't give it clean water. It doesn't mean that you only have to drink water. You can drink anything you like, but you need to drink enough water as well. And the high raw food intake, I'll, I'll do um, another Periscope and video on this, because eating food that is in a state that your body can use it is so important and I've learned a lot more about this since my accident which incidentally was in the year 2000 so it's 15 years ago now. Exercise is really important and I was very fit at the time that I was hit by the car. That evening I had actually been to the climbing centre climbing for two hours and then I'd been out to the Fiddle, fiddle and Bone dancing with my friend to a lovely live band that I really liked and I drank a pint of water. I was on my way home at half past ten and unfortunately so were other people coming out of pubs and some of them had been drinking a lot more than made them fit to drive. Supportive medicines is another topic that I will go into in more depth in another episode. Careful choice of thoughts. I truly believe that my optimism and my trust that my body knew how to heal itself was a huge part in my healing. Um, loving people, I was tremendously supported in this journey, um, mostly by my three teenage children, but also by all of the visitors who came every day to see me, organised by my daughter. I didn't know that until afterwards. Um, and another daughter supported me by being at my bedside, for the whole time that I was in hospital, which is five weeks. Um, very interesting, that's all described in the book. Sunshine and fresh air. Now this is a huge area which lately has become very strangely um, skewed by people who don't trust sunshine. Um, I suspect there is some um, money to be made from making people afraid of sunshine. But it's actually absolutely essential to our skin's health, as well as our body's health. And it um, is essential in preventing skin cancer. You can look that up if you want to. It's well documented. And then the last section of the book in, uh, that I learned about um, is treating injuries. And I developed a whole technique of my own. After I had this accident and I got well, I trained to treat old injuries. So I now have 14 years experience of that and I understand very well what helps injuries to heal. And it's yet again making sure that enough oxygen gets to the cells that are trying to heal. So in essence, everything I learned points to making sure that the cells of the body are bathed in the fluid is called interstitial fluid. It's the, the fluid. And nutrients for the and it makes sense to you and I will be 
broadcasting again tomorrow. And I would love it if you could tell me which areas you're interested in hearing about, and I will do another scope about those. Have a look at my website, um, katherineholland.co.uk, and particularly my YouTube channel, um, which I'm rebranding as Indestructible TV. And I'm having fun making episodes for that now. It's, um, it's good fun. I really enjoy doing this. And I would love to have your feedback as to what was useful and interesting and what you'd like to hear more about. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Goodbye.